in at the table as we cry out soon and very soon. On page one or 706, and we sing it twice in a standard possible. about, seeking only to kill and steal and destroy. Resolve today to put all your trust in the Lord, who is your true provider. Lay up treasures in heaven. You are to be salt you are to be light. Lord, may you find in us a people waiting and ready. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. And now we'll do him praise team, please. Join us in praise and worship.
Can we have our offering come forward, please? showing up at my house. <laughs> well, the neighbor gives us stuff when he gets extra. And, and, and he, Harry got hold of some peppers, you know, and he put them in an egg, which he, every now and then he slips. <laughs> but he, he loved it, but he thought it could be hot. So somebody throwing a, a pepper that will just strip the first layer off your tongue, you got to get one of those to her, amen? I pray for him, he's not feeling very good today, so we're going to do as we always do and go on and praise the Lord and step into his presence and give him all the glory and honor. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we are gathered here this morning to worship you and to offer you once again our lives, our service, our gifts, and our hearts. And we come, Lord, honoring you, for you alone are worthy of supreme praise. You alone are God. There is none other than you, and we are your servants, and we long for your manifested presence. We wait for you. We watch for you, and we long for your return. And Lord, we come with thankful hearts. We're so grateful for all that you've provided for us, not just the material things that make our lives so rich and sometimes so easy, but for the undeniable presence of your comfort as you see us through the storms that we all must face. We're grateful. Father, for your mercy and your divine touch in our lives. We have all been grieved by loss and yet are comforted by your promises and your assurance that death and hell and the grave have been defeated and that perfect peace awaits us for we are kingdom people. Lord, this morning <clears throat> I lift up the sin of our family and the Johnson family, both have lost great saints. We ask for your comfort and your blessing of this. And Lord, so many prayers that Harry and I have uttered, even this morning, that they would stir up the heavenlies and that you would act. 
We ask for your sure shelter around those of God who demonstrate to us so often that servant's heart. Bless those in our military and those first responders of all kinds who stand in the gap for others. Bless our police officers. According to your word, Lord, bless those with authority over us. We trust you to take them where you would have them to go, for you are always the last word. But hear us, your people, as we cry out to you. We repent, O oh God, of all that we've done that has hurt you. We ask you, Lord, to forgive our sins and our, our lack of striving to increase your kingdom and to protect the innocent. God, keep us as the apple of your eye. Bless us as we try to bring you forward, that we might be an increase to your kingdom here on earth. Help us to offer Jesus to those still lost, for we know that you desire that none be lost. And bless this community and this church. Stir us up. We ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Ready for service and have your lamps shining. 
Be like servants who are waiting for their master to come home from a wedding party. When he comes and knocks, the servants immediately open the door for him. They will be blessed when their master comes home because he sees that they were watching for him. I tell you the truth, the master will dress himself to serve and tell the servants to sit at the table and he will serve them. Those servants will be blessed when he comes in and finds them still waiting, even if it is midnight or later. Remember this. If the owner of the house knew what time a thief was coming, he would not allow the thief to enter his house. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at a time when you don't expect him. This is the inherent word of the living God. It is the word of God for the people of God. Stand is able for a word of God. Whether we are ready or not. 
He will return as a great warrior, not a gentle shepherd. He will return as a lion of the tribe of Judah, not as a sacrificial lamb. He's coming again. His return is one of the continual promises that run throughout the New Testament. And if you haven't already arrived safely home, boy, you better have found yourself inside that hedge tucked in that sure shelter, safe in God's true tower when that time comes, a place the world cannot reach. And we've lived long enough to see prophecy after prophecy fulfilled that should speak to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. They tell us the time is short, amen? amen. Now late, later in Luke 21, we hear Jesus speaking again about the signs that will come, and he tells his disciples, you've got to watch for the sign, just as one watches when the leaves of the tree come out and they green up, and you know without a doubt when you see that, when the mountains begin to change color from that gray and brown to sprinklings of green, you know summer's coming. Well, folks, the leaves are green enough. Amen? Now, Jesus was very intentional in telling his disciples to remain watchful and to not ever lose that sense of urgency. He's telling them over and over, you've got to get ready and you've got to stay ready because when the time comes, nothing will stop it. It's going to come whether you are ready or not. Now, Scripture today assures the saints that God has a heart for his people. God has a kingdom to offer that's greater than anything that the world can offer. Jesus has spoken about trusting God while also seeking or striving for that kingdom. This is a kingdom with a promise from God. And you can be at peace because you can depend on what God can and will provide. Because the kingdom of God the kingdom that God is providing for those who follow him cannot be lost to thieves. It cannot be destroyed. Now we know one, don't we? Who does nothing other than seek to steal and destroy. And we know that foul devil is certainly capable of affecting the world around us. Don't we? We're watching it happen. It's unfolding before our eyes like a good story. Or a bad man. But the kingdom that we belong to cannot be overcome by that thief, that destroyer, that liar, and that killer. And those who pour themselves and all that they have into God's kingdom have that sure shelter, that safe tower, that stronghold that is so true. And they will be in a place that will hold true treasures that the heart desires. Jesus has declared where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He's saying the way that we use our gifts, our money, those things give the heart its direction. See, when you spend everything you have on yourself, guess where your heart will go? But when you give to those who are in need, when you pour it into a mission that reflects God's will, your heart is going to go there. It's going to go where God wants it to go because your focus is going to be on being in service. You're going to have that servant heart that he talked about today. Then, then he says, after that, he says, always be ready. That's the headline for our, the next piece of our scripture. Be dressed, ready for service with lamps lit and shining. Be waiting for the master to arrive. And the imagery in this parable is one of devoted preparation. It's of servants who are very intentional and faithful about their job. And then there's this unexpected shift. The master arrives. And instead of being attended to, the master serves dinner to the servants. 
Now we've often talked about the fact that the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom. It's a kingdom where you give to get. It's also apparently a kingdom where you serve, that you might be served by the King of Kings and the Lord of Kings. And this inversion of social roles between the master and the servants illustrates there's a new relationship between God and those who choose kingdom living. And yet, Jesus ends with this strong caveat. He says, remember this. If the owner knew what time the thief was coming, he wouldn't have allowed the thief to even gain access to his house. So remain always ready. Otherwise, the thief may gain a foothold. Because even Jesus would not give a time or an hour a day. But he did warn over and over. It would be at a time when many would simply not be prepared. Because when God decides the time, Jesus will return. Ready or not. Now I do believe we're in the latter days. The end times. I believe if you were looking at the trees, you'd see the leaves are green. They're way really past budding, that's for sure. Amen? But God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And obviously, God's timing is not our timing. Could be today. Could be tomorrow, Marty. Could be five years from now. Or 50. I think that's quite possible. It could be 500, but I doubt it. I tell you this, if we're living for the kingdom of God, it won't matter to us. Because we won't make it one way or the other. But I do honestly believe we are in a place in God's timing where we must leave our lackadaisical attitudes behind and become both urgent in our seeking God through study, through prayer, searching the world. And we also must be desperately hungry for those lost souls that are everywhere in the world around us. The church is clearly under attack as an institution, but the kingdom <coughs> will triumph. The gates of hell, the word says, will indeed try to bring it down, but it will not prevail. Now that promise doesn't eliminate the risk or the battle, or the violence. Which is why there's such a real need to be perpetually ready. It is appropriate to remember that around the world the violence is ongoing. The battle is real. The risk is increasingly dangerous. There are people that are being imprisoned and enslaved and beaten and sold and martyred for their faith. Now they have seen the reality of living through a ready-or-not situation. And it came to many of them at an unexpected hour. It is appropriate to examine our own lives and ask, if, are we in a place of such diligent preparation like the servants that kept their lights ablaze for the Master's return? And are we ready for that thief that we can be sure is going to always be on the prowl, looking for that way that he can get in, that he can steal, that he can destroy all who are truly of the kingdom of God. And each of us has to answer that for ourselves. Meanwhile, we are also called to be in communal service for the kingdom of God. And that is what the church is really about. Saints advancing the kingdom of God, saving the lost, telling the good news, transforming the world through the truth of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Readying the world for the final time when Jesus will return. Ready or not, he's coming. We share again this table of the Lord. Let us remember all those who join us in that great.
cloud of witnesses. Let us rejoice that they were ready when the call came. Mary and I lost a dear sister in Christ. As some of you knew her, at least had met her and her husband as they came and spoke because they were missionaries to Bulgaria. What a battle that woman walked through. And she never faltered a step in her faith. She's dancing now. Determine in our hearts to stay the course. Once again, let us be the ones that Jesus finds with lamps ablaze as we stay busy about kingdom business. Amen? Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to step deeper into the Change every part of us that isn't attuned to your calling, to your direction, to your intention for our lives. Every day, Lord, until you return, we have another chance to serve and to tell the good news and to offer Jesus to the lost. Let us be among the saints that are found ready for your return, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. invitation to the table and know that this invitation is for you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our Lord. We have failed to be in the church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Lord, if you would uncover our elephants. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, 
with your people on earth. And all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. If you would hold the bread up to us. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you lift the chalice. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again.
But he's faithful. In the midst of the battle, he's faithful. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's peace fall on you. May his favor find you. May that fire, that Holy Spirit fire, well up inside of you and fill you that you will be the lit lamp, the shining light on the hill. Go and tell the good news. Go and bless people with the word of the Lord. Go knowing you are blessed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.